Yo, what's going on guys? DJ has here, CollectiveKicks.com. Wanted to bring you guys a video and give you guys a ranking of my favorite uh, Adidas Boost models uh, thus far. And uh, I'll put some links in the description to some of the products if you guys are interested in any of these pairs that I'm going to kind of cover in this video. I'm not going to cover every single pair out here, but I wanted to uh, just give you a visual. Like I have quite a few pairs of Adidas Boost in my collection and it's definitely a pair of shoes that I, um, or th it's a, a, a technology of shoes that I really, really love. Um, so you can see like there's some that are just completely thrashed and uh, mud all over them. And then there's some that are brand new in box still. So at the end of the day, though, um, a lot of people might be new to the Adidas Boost kind of um, technology. And, and you might have tried one and you're curious about the other pair, but you don't want to spend $180 for a pair of Ultra Boost. So this hopefully will be an ed educational sort of informal video for those people. Uh, but just a note, my feet are my feet and your feet are your feet. So what might be comfortable to me might not be comfortable to you. This is just my opinion on the matter. And if you guys have a difference in opinion, leave a comment uh, and then let other people know why. And if you guys like those comments that people leave, give them a thumbs up so other people can see them because it's important. Um, again, it, everybody has kind of a varying opinion. This is just my opinion, uh, strictly from a casual uh, wearing point of view and uh, definitely not training or running in mind. So let's go ahead and get into it. I'm going to break out uh, some of these sneakers. So first things first, I'm not going to be reviewing some of my Mad Scientist customs, although these are extremely comfortable. Um, this is the Roshi custom that I did. And then this is my Flyknit Racer custom uh, that I ended up doing. And both of these actually turned out um, better in person, like on feet, than maybe the custom might have uh, alluded to. Uh, but uh, these ones are definitely more comfortable uh, than these ones that doesn't say that doesn't mean these are not comfortable but these ones are insane uh, but I'm not going to include either of these two um, and the other thing I'm not going to include is the energy boost which a lot of people are probably wondering this is kind of the the legacy line before um, the ultra boost came out and this was kind of the flagship running shoe I think they retailed about 160 uh, my wife has a pair of these and she's beat these ones up pretty good and she said these ones are really comfortable to run in uh, but I know she prefers the ultra boost over these ones uh, just throwing that out there from the beginning. So let's go ahead and break down um, some of these models. So we'll start off uh, at the very beginning, uh, kind of of the um, boost line, at least in my opinion, um, which is the Peer Boost, or this is the Peer Boost Reveal. Um, I think that's what it was called because of the different materials on the upper. But the overall shape of the shoe and then the, the sole is exactly the same. I blacked out mine. Um, so this is one that I did a test with some Plasti Dip on and blacked it out. Uh, but overall comfort of the shoe, uh, definitely like a very, very comfortable shoe. Very lightweight. The only downside about this shoe was the tongue right here had some pretty aggressive lines. And then same as the back collar. And if you just wore these without socks on and whatnot, um, th these parts would kind of dig into your, your ankle area. And that was definitely not a very comfortable uh, feel because of that. But um, that being said, the boost on here is really, really good. And if you're looking for a comfortable casual shoe, I mean, this is an easy 7 or 8 out of 10. Um, definitely a very, very comfortable shoe. Uh, as for the ranking, I'll put it down, I guess, down here on the lower side of things. And then I'll kind of rank it back upwards uh, to make it um, visually appealing for you guys. It's not currently ranked uh, right now. So throwing that out there. So next pair that I would say is probably not... Actually, I would probably even put this one here. The, the ones that are the least comfortable out of all of them, to be honest, are these ones. And this is my black custom that I ended up doing uh, for these with the uh, Roleplay Supply Laces. Really like the overall look of these ones. Uh, but at the end of the day, on the comfort scale, it ends up down here. Um, and then also, this is a different colorway, so I'll just throw this one kind of to the side. But um, this one with not the, the prime knit upper, it's not that comfortable. Um, and if you own these and, you, and you're like, what the heck? I can't believe this. Um, it's, it's true. Like from my feet, I'm looking from again, a casual perspective. They're not overall very, very comfortable shoes. Um, it has the same amount of boost. It looks like as it would on the pure boost. It looks almost identical except for it protrudes out the back and more. And then it has these support, um, kind of foam parts on the inner side and then the back and then the front. And that actually feels like, and a lot of people um, said this in the comment section of my video of these, um, when you're actually compressing and walking, it like prevents the extra flex of the, the foam or the the, uh, the boost material. And so it kind of holds your, your foot in place more. So it's not as liberating, I guess, as a pair of like the pure boosts. Um, and that being said, 
they're just they just has a restricted comfort feeling it feels like it's been muted is what i said in my review video though so on the scale of all of these shoes out there the nmd is on the lowest end of the spectrum that's not a bad thing necessarily it's still a very comfortable shoe but comparison to the, the other shoes out here um these ones don't hold a flame to some of the other ones out so i'll put this one down here on the low end as well this is kind of the same thing in nmd but the the chukka same thing the other thing that was really frustrating is the fit of these ones are true to size but the fit of these ones were a half size if not even a full size big they're just it's the same exact size 9.5 but the way that the upper fits on these is insane. It's so much bigger. Uh, the same thing can be said about the um, the Prime Knit version of the NMD. So these are the $120 ones on the left hand side uh, down here. This is the $170 version. And this one is more comfortable. Uh, it's definitely more comfortable. The upper is more comfortable. It's just a more comfortable shoe in general, which is the reason why it goes ahead of this one. Um, but uh, but that being said, it's still like on the lower end of comfort for some of these sneakers out here. So this is kind of like the, the ranking, if, if you will, uh, from like the least to getting more comfortable. Um, and I'm going to keep going. And the next ones that are like that belong down here are actually these ones. Um, these are the Easy Boost 350s. And they have that capsule like encapsulated boost inside of this rubber outsole, extremely heavy comparison any to any of the other shoes out here. Uh, but obviously the one that most people like talk about is definitely one of those shoes that people really, really um, like. The downside is it's just not overall the most comfortable shoe that I think that is available. And, and I'm just being 100% honest. If you're looking from a, a strictly um, comfort perspective, not resale value and anything else in between, these shoes are not as comfortable as some of the other ones. They're still very comfortable, just not as comfortable. So as I'm going to continue through and rank these things, um, this is the, the one where it like I think it pisses people off a little bit because after this one, I would actually say that the Ultra Boost would go next. And the Ultra Boost is like everybody else says would suggest that this is the most comfortable pair of uh, Adidas Boost shoes on the market. Um, but for me personally, I just, I have to disagree. The only reason why is because, um, and this is just the way I don't like the fit because it is very snug around your, um, ankle area right here. And this compresses a little bit too, too snug on my ankle. Um, and because of that, like, it's just a little bit uncomfortable because of, of the, the tightness around the ankle. Um, overall aesthetics, the shoe is really nice. The boost material is really, really great on the ultra boost, but I just don't like the snug upper and because of that, uh, this one was lower on my list than some of the other ones out here, which is, I know some of you guys aren't surprised, some of you guys would be surprised, but um, for the newer subscribers that didn't know, all three of these ones are Ultra Boost and they all like fit on that scale. And that is including even the ones with the newer uh, updated soles. So just so you know, this is the old one on the top. The, the, the bottom one is the new one with the Continental Rubber, as it says uh, right there. This one doesn't have that. So it's just a different pattern, different traction on it. And it still it didn't change the comfort level uh, on these any. Um, so the top two or top three, if you will, uh, that I have out here is the um, Pure Boost Reveal, excuse me, Pure Boost 2 um, Chills. These ones are the reveals here. These ones are the chills. I have to admit the naming convention of the way that they do this is really, really frustrating. Uh, but that being said, um, it's definitely this is like one of these shoes that i like love it's just one of my favorites i have like probably seven pairs of these ones um there this one's is like one of my new ones that i've never worn yet but they're just incredibly comfortable shoes and uh i love the fact that they fix the issues on the first pair the collar on the back is nice the collar or the the tongue on the front is nice and um and it's comfortable they're very lightweight decent materials on it not prime it but very decent materials and the boost material is um, unparalleled. Now, these ones don't give you a lot of room for um, like support. They're definitely not a supportive shoe. So if you're looking for that, this is not the shoe for you. Uh, but if you like kind of that Roshi-like feel, uh, which is like basically, you, I wear these with no socks and stuff. Um, these ones are great. And this, so this, that was a Pure Boost 2. This is, is the, the Chill, but it's basically the same exact shoe. They have a couple different versions of it. Um, and then the number one shoe out here, in my opinion, is this one. And it's not a popular 
um, probably shoe out there. It's definitely not a popular shoe. It sits on every website, but this is the most comfortable pair that I have out of all of them, in my opinion. The reason why is because this is the Ultra Boost ST, but I removed the straps on my pair, which you don't have to, but aesthetically, I like the look of them without the straps. And then also, um, this one has a detached tongue. So this is the main issue that I had with the regular Ultra Boost is the fact that it was just too snug around there. This one, it frees up the tongue, so it makes a huge difference for me. And I wear this shoe a ton, it has a continental rubber on it. Amazing shoe, I've, I've tweeted out deals for these ones for downwards of $127 um, on some sites. Definitely, definitely worth uh, trying on if you like the Ultra Boost, uh, but you don't like how snug it is. And that's the Ultra Boost ST model. Um, but that's pretty much my ranking. What do you guys think? I didn't do the uh, the new Pure Boost uh, ZX or the, whatever the one is with the, the rugged outsole. People have been telling me I needed to try it. I will be trying that eventually. But as of now, these are the ones that I have. And um, and that ST is definitely my favorite one. Go figure. Like So it's not all about hype all the time. If you're, lot, if you're just talking about pure comfort, um, I'm weighing in and letting you guys know what I think about this. But weighing in the comment section and let other people know and myself what you think is the most comfortable pair out there. And if you haven't tried the Ultra Boost, is it worth $180? Absolutely, 100%. If you guys get a chance to buy a pair um, on sale, I try to tweet out those ones as, as well, sometimes down as low as $127. Um, but even if like the 140 range, if you can get, cop a pair, super comfortable. You will not regret it if you've never tried them on. And uh, the Pure Boost 2s, Back here and here, those ones retail about 120, and I usually tweet out deals from anywhere between 80 and 100 dollars on those ones, and they're they're just crazy comfortable. So, um, but that's pretty much it. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed. If this video was informative, please leave a comment or give the video a thumbs up and let me know. And we'll catch you guys for some more videos soon. Peace, guys.